Welcome to the podcast, and now here are our hosts, Mandy V and Tajay B. Today we're joined um, by Emily Llewellyn, LGPC and staff counselor at Prosper State University's Counseling and Psychological Services. I'm Dr. Amanda Vanderveer, and I'm Tajay Phillipson, and we're going to be talking about self care today. So we've heard a lot about the importance of self-care lately. It's been in the news, it's been all over the place. Make sure you take care of yourself. Self-care, (laughs) self-care, self-care. What does that even mean? So when I talk about self-care as a therapist, I talk about it as paying a favor to your future self. So it is a way that you are going to set your future self up for just a little bit of success. So that can be things like doing your laundry, taking your medication, it can be things like, yeah, I'm planning to get Starbucks because I know I was up late last night and I need some caffeine. Like <laughs> those kinds of things as well. So for me, that's how I phrase it. Um, a very like general definition from like the World Health Organization is basically it's a way that we take care of ourselves, that we engage in healthy patterns of behavior, that we can set ourselves up to be healthy. So how do we know if we're in need of some self-care? What are some symptoms we will see in ourselves? Um, The first symptom I always like catch with people where I'm like, okay, I think we're like missing out on the Mm self-care. I'll say this is a symptom and also like a phrase that they say, which is I never feel like I have time to myself. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) The nods of recognition is like, (laughs) yeah, I've totally been there. Yeah. Yeah. When you feel like you're constantly doing things like, your whole day is a task list mm-hmm. of, okay, I have to do this, and then I have to meet at the library, and then I have to do this exam, and then I have this essay that I have to spend a few hours doing, and this, and this, and this, and this. Mm-hmm. And then when you look at it, you're like, okay, well, where's, like, the time for you, for you to decompress or take a break? And everyone's like, no, that doesn't exist. What are you talking about? And it's like, no, like, that's, that's essential. Like, a lot of times in our society, self-care is viewed as a luxury. It is something to be earned. Yes. Um, when in reality, that's really, that's not it. Self-care is a necessity. It's how we set ourselves up for success. We stack the deck just a little bit for us in the future. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes total sense. And one of the things, like we're talking about society and how society views self-care. Mm-hmm. There's, I, I think there's a lot of this perception in society that, self-care is like going and getting that mocha frappuccino or or eating that that high fat high calorie meal or um like going out and spending a lot of money on yourself um what do you think are like better ways to deal with self-care and to and to have self-care for yourself yeah, I like I said, I think self-care is mm-hmm. this luxury. It's bubble baths, it's going to Lush and getting a bath bomb, yeah. and then doing the face mask or going to like a mm-hmm. Korean spa, like those kinds of things, which there's a lot of privilege infused in those things because yeah. you have to have money to do that. Right. You have to have the time and the energy to do that. People who work two jobs, who are trying just barely to get by and survive, they can't engage in that kind mm-hmm. of self-care. And a lot of times it's really bypassed of that they just don't engage in any self-care. Um, so I, I talk about relentless self-care, which is self-care that you put into everyday life. And you can do that sitting on the couch, not moving. So like a good one that I suggest for people is turn off all of the notifications on your phone, except for text messages and phone calls because, or, and like FaceTime, if that's the way you communicate with a lot of people, because social media, do you scrolling, endlessly going through, constantly checking to see if you have notifications, what's this notification, whose birthday is it, that kind of thing. Um, they can really take, you know, that's mental energy that you're putting towards that. And sometimes taking a step back, even if you only turn them off for an hour, can relieve you of kind of that burden. Sitting on the couch, let's say like you can't, like you have no energy to get up, just stretch in some way. I tell people like lay down and just like put your hands above your head and just totally stretch out. If you've been sitting for a really long time, like your muscles are going to be sore. So that kind of self-care, which is something that people bypass, they don't see it as self-care. Yeah. They see it as like, oh, like, I don't know, it's just sometimes you do that. And I'm like, no, that's self care. You take care of your body that way, mm-hmm. or your brain, or whatever. That's a good description. I know my phone is always dinging, and I have no idea what it's dinging <laughs> for. It drives me nuts. So, like, 
silencing them is definitely something that just gives me peace. <laughs> right. And I think, yeah, self-care is about peace. It's mm -hmm. about finding ways to engage in just little moments of peace throughout the day or just paying future favors to yourself. Yeah. I like that. Future favors to yourself. I have a question because I feel like in my personal life, I have, I'm around a lot of people a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And recently I've been trying to just be with myself and get my work done and prioritize myself. And I feel like sometimes that could be perceived as selfish or self-care could be perceived as selfish. So how do you tell the difference between someone participating in self-care and being selfish? So this is a tricky one because I think for a lot of people, any self-care is viewed as selfish. Mm -hmm. Anything I do for myself has to be earned and if it's not earned, that's not okay. Mm -hmm. Kind of the, the view of you always have to be working, grind culture, hustle culture, constantly having to be on, you know, first in the office, last out of the office. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so who wants, I don't know who wants to live a life where you constantly feel like you're on the grind, mm -hmm. not I. But, you know, for some people, maybe they thrive under that, far and few between from what I find. So I always say that self-care is I statements. I'm going to do this for me. I'm doing this for me. Mm -hmm. It's when you start making demands of other people that I think maybe you're crossing over into, sometimes that can be viewed as selfish. Mm -hmm. You know, saying something like, oh, I need space because I need some alone time so I can process the things that are going on, or I need some time alone so I can study. Those kind of things, self-care, not selfish. Mm -hmm. Saying things like, you better not bug me because I have all these things to do, and mm -hmm. That's a little rougher. And like, yeah, you're setting a boundary. And yes, I guess you're sort of engaging in self-care. But the way that you're conveying it is a little less. Mm -hmm. uh, how do I say it? It's a little more demanding as opposed to like an I statement, something that's in your control and your behavior. And it sounds like boundaries are a big part of self-care. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. Um, so boundaries... Boundaries are I statements of behaviors that you can control. Mm -hmm. And there are lines that you draw for people to know what is acceptable for you and what is not. Mm -hmm. And what you need and want. And I think that like that is something that's very difficult to know what you need and want, especially if you grew up and nobody ever taught you what you needed or wanted. Mm -hmm. Or your needs and wants were pushed to the side for grown-ups in your life or other people, you know, like if you had a really sick sibling, you know, or a sibling who needed a lot more support than you. Maybe your needs and wants were pushed to the side. And so it can be really hard to get people to be like, I don't, I don't know what I want. I don't know what I need. So creating boundaries, you have to establish that first. Um, but once you kind of get to that point and you can start enforcing boundaries with people and being like, yeah, you know, like, I don't feel comfortable when you talk to me, you know, when you talk to me that way. And so I'm going to leave the conversation with you. Mm -hmm. You just yell or scream or make demands or make me feel guilty, those kind of things. That in and of itself gives you the space to be like, I'm self-advocating. This is for me. I'm engaging in self-care by keeping you over here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Self-care is part of like, putting boundaries in your relationships. It's super important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what type of self-care activities do you think would be best for college students, especially during these stressful times like midterms and finals where Self-care just goes out the window completely. <laughs> you don't know anything about that. I've never had a problem with that. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> Me either. I was a student for seven years. I never had a problem engaging in self-care when I was stressed. No. Um, <laughs> no, I think that when times are stressful, it becomes harder because your routine gets disrupted. You have more demands coming in. This is one that I always suggest to college students, but it is a very hard one to follow through, which is get some sleep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, sleep <laughs> is like such a foundational, like, I, like, I'm really, like, do I want everybody to get seven to nine hours mm -hmm. of sleep? Yes, of course. Do I think that that is realistic that college students are going to do that? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. That's um, the first thing that goes <laughs> out the window, yeah, right? right? And so yeah. I'm always like, if you can get sleep, get some sleep, at mm -hmm. least. I'm like, I, I want you to aim for seven to nine hours, but again, I'm not going to like set you up for failure. Mm -hmm. um, so even if you have to pull an all-nighter, 
studies have shown that even if you just lay down, you don't go to sleep. If you lay down in a dark room on a bed for 20 minutes, you will feel more rested than if you just didn't lay down at all. I believe it. Yeah. I do. So sleep, that's totally worth my thing for self-care. Make sure you're taking your medications. Stay hydrated. Please drink your water. I know you're going to want to suck down all the caffeine and the coffee mm -hmm. and the, the, the red the red bulls <laughs> and the bangs and like all of that. Yes, that's fine. Caffeine, you know, again, you're lacking sleep, so you're going to mm -hmm. substitute with some caffeine short term. That's a okay. We're fine with that. Please drink some water while you're doing that. Try and eat, I want three meals, but at least two meals and some snacks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Try to set yourself up so that you're, like, things aren't taking up mental energy. Because mm -hmm. if you're dehydrated, like, is that going to fix all of the problems? No. Mm -hmm. If you're dehydrated, is that going to make them harder to deal with? Yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> so I have a question for everyone here, so that's why this is something that I'm interested for all of us. Starting with you, Ms. Tom, what is your favorite form of self-care? So I break self-care down into daily, weekly, monthly, and special occasion self-care. Oh, I like that. Just because that's for nice. me, yeah, it sets okay. me up that I'm like, okay, these are the things that I have to do every day. This is what I need to do, you know, weekly to bi-weekly, monthly, and then what are the special occasions, which is when I tend to splurge on doing the like really expensive like Korean spas or um, Ooh, yeah. my my partner lives in New York City, so I will travel up to go see him for like a week and take a week off of work and like mm -hmm. That's my self care. So that's a special occasion. But daily, putting on my makeup. Mm -hmm. Weekly, it's either going to see my own therapist or uh, doing laundry. And then monthly, I deep clean. I love deep cleaning my apartment like once a month. I'm like, yes, this because afterwards, and I'm like lighting the candles. I'm like, this is great. I feel so put together. Um, another like, and I always like to suggest like once people like getting your car washed is a form of self care. Mm -hmm. I don't, like, I've never met something that makes you feel more like you've got your life put together and going to the car wash <laughs> and, like, washing your car and vacuuming it out. And yes. like, I'm a totally new person. Like, I don't even know who I am anymore. Like, those kind of things, that's, like, what I need for self-care. That was a really good question, yeah. Tony. So, for self-care for me, it's more about, like, checking in with myself, meditating, praying, Focusing on something bigger than myself, that that really helps me to realign with where I'm going, what I'm doing. And um, that is so super important for me so that I'm staying within what I want to do. I'm making sure during that prayer and meditation time that I'm living in the boundaries that I want to live in, that I'm doing the things that I want to do. So that's really been exceedingly helpful for me to like focus where I'm going. What about you? For me, <laughs> um I love that you said that car thing because mm. we were talking yeah, about we were just today. talking about it. Yeah. And I went to go clean my car and I do feel like a new person and I feel mm. like my car looks so good and I feel like I look so good because I'm in my car. Mm. So that's true. <laughs> I really like to cook and I feel like that's a form of self care for me. Um chopping I don't know, maybe it's a little aggressive but like chopping everything and making everything and yes. up, put it in the oven, all that stuff. That makes me feel good, especially when the meal is good and it's something mm -hmm. I want to eat. I love that makeup, of course. I'm a girl. I love to do my <laughs> makeup and my hair. And also see my friends. Like, yeah. just going see my friends, talk about my day, talk about their day. Oftentimes, I like when I talk about other people's lives because it makes me not think about my own. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm kind of a problem solver kind of person, so mm -hmm. I like to help people solve their issues, so that kind of makes me feel better inside. So that's how I do my form of self-care. Yeah, I definitely, I love to cook. And just like chopping those vegetables is just meditative in mm -hmm. its own way. Mm -hmm. I can definitely relate to that. Mm -hmm. Very much so. <laughs> so um, when we're looking at self-care for college students, uh, what type of resources are there? Um, like, I'm switching it up here, sorry. What type of resources are there for people out in our community struggling with with self-care issues? What what type of resources are available for them? Yeah, so I think this is gonna be pretty individualized because different people need different supports. Ooh, good point. Yeah, so you know, if it's like struggling with let's say food security, you know, going to the food bank or you know, going to the social security mm -hmm. office and you know applying for SNAP, those kinds of things. That's where like I send people to. Mm -hmm. um, 
being your own therapist, I know therapy is expensive and definitely a privilege, but if it's something that you can engage in, please engage in it. I know I'm biased. I know I'm a therapist. And like, <laughs> of course, I'm going to be like, go see me do it. But it true. Like, I don't say that just as a therapist. I say that as a client, too. Mm-hmm. But who goes to therapy? It is 50 to 60 minutes once a week where I get to be like, Ron is my therapist. And I'm like, Ron, you'll never believe what happened this week. <laughs> And he'll be like, please lay it on me, what's happening? Um, and so, you know, if you have those resources, I, engaging in internet resources as well, like mindfulness meditations mm-hmm. or grounding yeah. techniques, yeah, you can access those for free on YouTube. You don't, mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't even need an account. So, like, mm-hmm. accessing those TikTok accounts that are run by therapists or people who are, you know, individuals that engage in self-care or teach people about self-care, of course, check them out to make sure they're legit. But mm-hmm. like, yeah, that's an easy one too. Scroll through, see what suggestions they have. Um, trying to think of like other community resources. Um, yeah, reaching out to your friends, I think is another great mm-hmm. one. Your social support network, because they may have something like in their back pocket that you haven't thought about mm-hmm. um, of where you can go because you can see what's a good way to engage in it. And this area is filled with outdoor activities. Mm -hmm. I know, I don't know, you might know, I'm not sure if you're on TikTok, but there's a trend going around where like therapists are like, your therapist and clients are being like, well, I'm going on a stupid walk for my stupid mental health and it's working. (laughs) And I'm like, yeah, do things like that. Yes. Even if all you do is open your windows because Mm -hmm. it's starting to get warmer. Mm -hmm. Just do that. Just pull open the blinds, let some sunshine come in. You don't have to get out of bed, like literally stand up, open the window, lay back down. That's all like, those are easy ways to engage in self-care that cost nothing for you. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that vitamin D shot when you open the windows <laughs> and you get the sun. That sun hits. Yeah, Everybody's re- realizing their seasonal depression is going away. It's like, yes. oh my goodness. Yes, it's a thing. <laughs> it's a real thing. <laughs> I like where you originally started the first question you were saying, like, what are the type of resources that are available for students? Yeah. Yes. Um, I like anything under the student affairs umbrella. So okay. if you're struggling with, well, let's say housing and it's your roommate, it's cost, it's something like that, going to res life, coming to CAPS, we're totally free. Mm-hmm. Like no cost to students. We are a fantastic resource. And and that's amazing because yeah, yeah. Therapy costs a lot of money if you're paying out of pocket. Yes. And, and college students can receive that. University students here receive it for free, right? Absolutely free. free. Actually, the only thing that at any point may cost money is if you are somebody who needs medication, so mm-hmm. medication support. Um, the cost of the medication is run through insurance or is paid out of pocket depending on the mm-hmm. student and their insurance. Um, but like seeing our nurse practitioner, Tina, or mm-hmm. engaging, you know, coming in and engaging in individual therapy or group therapy, totally free for students. Um, coming to the safe office is a good one, uh, depending on like what people are struggling with. And I think going to any of these offices that are on campus and going to them and saying, hey, this is what I'm struggling with, even if that office can't help you, they'll help get you to the office that does help, even does have those resources that can help you. Mm-hmm. That's a beautiful thing about Foster is always something out there to help someone or to benefit you as a student, faculty, community members, all of it. Yeah, Yeah. there are a lot of people that care Mm -hmm. about the students here. And I think sometimes it gets overshadowed, but there is a lot of, there are a lot of people that do care about our college students. Mm -hmm. And not just on campus, but off campus too. Yeah, Yeah, no, for sure. I, you know, sometimes clients will come in and they'll be like, I'm sure you only think about me like when I'm sitting in front of you. And I'm like, no, <laughs> you guys don't just like disappear from my mind the second you walk out of my office. I think about you guys and think about the issues that you're going through, especially when I have like some weeks I get like 10 people coming in all of the same problem. I'm like, all right, this is the theme for this week. I got yeah. it. Yeah. And then you get the chance to think about like opportunities to help and do yeah. and expand your practice, but also help others in the process. That's great. That's fun. So um, we also wanted to remind you mentioned FSU's uh, safe office. We also wanted to remind everybody out there listening to our podcast uh, that FSU also provides resources through educational programming. We do peer counseling, and we also provide moral support. We we, pers- we provide guidance. So 
Um, you're welcome to come into the safe office and talk to Ty or me or anybody else in the office that's there. We're, we're happy to talk anytime. Anytime. So, Emily, is there anything else you feel that we haven't covered about self-care that you would like to talk about? I think you guys pretty much hit all of the like important aspects of it. Um, you know, other than like, I wish I could compile like a full complete list of different self care, but that would oh know, my gosh, yes, be as long as you know in the United States. I feel mm -hmm. like because everybody has such individual needs for yeah. self care, but mm -hmm. no, I think you guys pretty much covered it all. Right. Thank you for coming today. We of really course. appreciate it. Ty and I really. I'm speaking for you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, we really enjoyed interviewing you today, and um, we thank you. And please, if you have um, issues, you can go to the CAPS office also. So they're a great resource, too. Yes. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Bye, everybody. <laughs> thank you for being a part of our podcast. This health and wellness podcast is brought to you by the Prevention Center and Peer Education Network at Frostburg State University. If you would like more information about our programs, visit us in Pullen Hall 109 or call us at 301-687-4761. Or you could also send us an email at safeoffice at frostburg.edu.